You're good to go. You're good to go on my end, uh, Rep Horn. We're all set. Thank you. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, we, uh, yeah, I'm going to make you host again. And I'm just going to, can you keep me as a co-host? I'm going to be on on the meeting the whole time. I'm just going to be behind the scenes. So if you need anything, just be like, hello. Thanks, Camille. Of course. Hey, Thank good to see you, Senator Casano. <laughs> Okay, now that we have um, we are, are, are officially live, I will officially reconvene the um, today's meeting of the Public Safety and Security Committee. Welcome to all of you uh, joining us this morning. Um, just uh, and I just want to again extend the thanks to the team of of clerks, including you know led by Gina, but behind the scenes who who help make all the all of this work in this unfamiliar setting. Um, and as always, I would ask all of you who aren't speaking to mute yourselves so that we can um, hear one another clearly. Um, and uh, before we begin, I'd just like to ask my um, other leaders of the committee if they have any opening comments. So my co-chair, Senator Bradley. None for me. Thank you very much, Maria. Nice to see everybody this morning. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Senator Champagne, ranking member, Senator Champagne. Thank you. I have no comments, just uh, welcoming everybody today. Thank you, Senator. And uh, Ranking Member Representative Robin Green. Uh, no comment, just um, I'm glad to be here today. Great, thanks. Nice to see all of your faces. Um, so uh, as usual, um, if you wish to speak, please use the raise your hand function. I just had a useful tip from a colleague the other day that if you, there's, if you cannot find the raise your hand function, depending on whether you are on a Mac or on a PC, you can either do option Y or alt Y and that will raise your hand. So um, one new little bit of tidbit, um, technical information of the, to add to the list of things that we're learning. Um, so with that, I'd just like to get onto our agenda as we all have a busy day ahead of us. Um, first up is, um, I guess as an initial matter, it's just always worth stating at this um, meeting, what we are voting on today is the idea of whether the, the concepts and bills on our agenda today are worthy of further debate. Uh, the votes do not indicate substantive, you know, support for the substantive policy underlying any of these um, uh, uh, concepts or bills. Uh, merely our willingness to, to hear from the public and to get more information on the idea as we move the, the proposal forward. So with that, um, item number, Roman number three on the agenda is concepts to be raised. And I'd like to start with um, items number three, four, and five. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, thank you. Yes. There was somebody sharing their screen. They oh. aren't right now. Thank you, Kathy. I was looking down. Um, okay. Um, so again, item uh, Roman numeral three, concepts to be raised. Um, I would entertain a motion to raise concepts uh, three, four, and five. Is there a motion? So move. I make the motion. Uh, I think that was Seconded. Representative Paolillo and second, Senator Bradley. Is that right? Correct. Okay, is there any discussion on those three concepts? And um, let me just read them out before we do that. They are, item number three is an act concerning police reports for motor vehicle accidents. Uh, item number four is an act expanding access to opioid antagonist and cartridge injector products and public, for public safety officers. And item number five is accreditation, reporting requirements, mental health, equipment purchase, and training of law enforcement officers. So uh, any discussion? Seeing none, I would ask for a voice vote on the motion to raise those concepts. Um, so please prepare yourselves in the usual way by unmuting your microphones and turning on your cameras. As always, it's um, necessary for the staff to have a visual identification of you before all votes. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. You're good, according to YouTube. Everyone was on camera. Everyone was on camera. Thank you, Camila. 
Uh, next, I will uh, also under Roman numeral three, concepts to be raised. Um, item number one, an act concern, uh, sorry, an act concerning the use of cell phones by emergency personnel. Um, is there a motion to raise that concept? So moved. So moved. Representative second. Halilo and Representative Jenga for the second. Thank you. Is there a discussion? Senator Champagne, please proceed. Thank you. So one of the points I want to make with uh, with this when we're we're looking at this is the fact that when the police radio doesn't work or you're doing follow up with the uh, a um, uh, victim or even getting in contact with a suspect. We have to keep those in mind when we do develop this, uh, this bill, because in, you know, in certain areas of this state, the, you know, the radios don't work. And the only way you're going to communicate with dispatch is by cell phone. And uh, even in some areas, the cell phone won't work. So sometimes you're on your own. So when, when we do develop this concept, we have to keep that in mind and we have to realize that you know, however we develop this, we have to exempt that. Um, and we have to keep in mind that, you know, the cell phones nowadays are the connection to everything in work. And a lot of officers in fire department use those cell phones uh, when they're conducting business. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Representative Howard. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, I echo my colleagues' comments, um, Senator Champagne's comments. But I also want to add that everybody today carries a cell phone. That, that is what goes on in our world. We, we actually, uh, you know, pay for cell phones for those who can't afford it because as a society and the government, we recognize how important that is because that's how people keep in touch these days. And our emergency personnel don't have the luxury of working in an office with phones where they can be reached by their family members, their children, their spouses who may need them. And I think that, you know, raising this concept and sending a message to our, our emergency personnel that the you know, we don't feel that they need to be connected to their family members when they're going to be home late because they're fighting a fire, or held up on a call. I think it sends a wrong message. And I think that, you know, as cell phones take over, uh, they become a part of how law enforcement officials, firefighters, EMS do their job for a multitude of reasons. And I just, you know, in a busy legislative session that we're doing this way to take up concepts like this that I just don't think need to be addressed, I, I, I just don't think is a good idea. I'll be voting no today. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Representative Vail. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just have concerns. I feel like um, emergency personnel is just being targeted politically um, again. Like, why, why, why are we trying to limit their rights that the rest of us um, that have on a daily basis? And I just think it's, it's, um, I don't know. I think it's targeted. It, it does. I don't see the point to it. And um, I believe that each municipality um, should be able to have, they probably have uh, policies in place that have some limitations on, on what people can and can't do. I know most workplaces do, and we don't need to sit here on our big throne in, in Hartford and tell all these municipalities how they should uh, operate their business. So I will be voting no. Thank you, Representative. I do just remind everyone that this is a concept at this point and, and all of the points that are being made here would be obviously really important parts of the conversation. And, and, and certainly I would hope we're not, tar you know, we're not trying to target anyone on this committee. Um, although there are safety concerns invoked by use of cell phones for all of us. Um, I think uh, next up was Representative Boyd. And I see you, you Representative uh, DG of Carlos. Sorry, Madam <laughs> Chair, I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble with the hand wave. I apologize. I'll, I'll put you on the list. No worries. But Representative Boyd, you were next. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, I, with one with a one sentence title, it's hard to um, it's hard to shape kind of what where this is going to go. I do share the concerns of my colleagues, but you know, this is a, a topic that is new to this committee. I don't think we've seen this one before. You know, so, you know, I'm willing to hear more about it, but uh, I just put my skepticism uh, as it goes forward for there. So I just to clarify, we we're we we're just raising a concept for a public hearing, right? We're not. Yes. OK, <laughs> that so, is thank correct. You, thank you, Representative. I think next was uh, Representative Hayes and then we'll go to Representative Di Giovancarlo. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, I truly realize that this is just a concept. 
However, I don't think that it should be um, our place to be governing uh, this type of legislation. Every municipality, every police department has an executive order. They all have uh, rules and regulations which need to be followed by their officers. Um, those reg rules and regulations list how and when a cell phone can be used. They have um, supervisors that supervise those officers to make sure they're doing what they want. And quite honestly, I just don't think it's our place to be making rules uh, for these departments across the state. It's up to those municipalities, those chief officers and those supervisors to make sure that the rules are in place and the officers are following it. I don't think this is something we should be taking care of. Thank you, Representative. Representative Di Giovancarlo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just wanna echo some of the comments uh, that there's several situations where an officer needs his phone, will use his phone, uh, I could I can be here all day uh, explaining it, but um, I, I'll be uh, voting no to this uh, concept also. Thank you, Representative. Um, anyone, I see some hands up, but they're both from representatives who have already spoken. Is there anyone, is that an additional, Representative Borer? Thank you, Madam Chair. I um, just wanna acknowledge that I, I echo some of the concerns of my colleagues. Again, as you indicated, this is just a concept, but equally concerning is Senator Champagne acknowledging that or not acknowledging, letting us know that in some parts of the state, there is no opportunity for communication through the radio. And I hope that um, through this discussing and debating this legislation, we will hear more about that because I think that's an equal concern. So I do look forward to the debate on this and I hope it, it, um, it expands into a larger conversation about how our officers are communicating in the best way that they can. Thank you, Representative Borer. And I would echo both Senator Champagne's um, comment on that and, and Representative Borer's, I live in such a district where communication is quite challenging. And so uh, I would be very concerned about uh, anything we do that would inhibit that kind of communication between, between our, our um, officers. So I, I I think all of the concerns raised here will be an important part of the debate, but I, but I do, um, there have been some safety concerns and I hope we have the opportunity to have that debate. So are there any further discussion on that? If not, I would ask the clerk to call the roll. Brett Horn. Uh, Rep. Horn votes yes. Senator Bradley. Senator Bradley. Senator Bradley. Senator Bradley. Senator Austin. Senator Austin votes yes. Representative Pelvilla. Representative Paola votes in the affirmative. Senator Champagne. Senator Champagne is going to vote no at this time. Rep Green. Uh, Representative Green votes no. Representative Ali Brennan. Ali Brennan votes yes. Representative Barry. Representative Barry votes yes. Representative Borough. Representative Borer votes yes. Representative Boyd. Representative Boyd, aye. Senator Cassano. Senator Cassano votes yes. Senator Chicarella. Senator Chicarella. Senator Chicarella. Representative DJ Giancarlo. Uh, Representative DJ Giancarlo votes no. Representative DeMassa. Representative DeMassa votes in the affirmative. Representative Felipe. Representative Felipe votes yes. Senator Fonfera. Senator Fonfera. Senator Fonfera. Representative Jenga. Representative Jenga votes yes. 
Representative Gonzalez. Representative Gonzalez. Representative Gonzalez. Representative Hall. Representative Hall. Representative Hall votes no. Representative Hayes. Representative Hayes votes no. Representative Howard. Representative Howard votes no. Representative McGordy. Representative McGordy votes no. Representative Quinn. Representative Quinn. Representative Quinn. Represent Representative Sardinsky. Representative Sardinsky. Representative Sardinsky. Representative Vail. Representative Vail votes no. Thank you. That's everyone, Rep. Horn. Sorry, I was still muted. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. I was uh, reminding everyone that we will hold both votes open for some period um, after the close of the meeting. And I'll, at the, uh, when we uh, recess, I'll, um, we'll, because we do have a public hearing this afternoon, it depends on what time we close the meeting. Um, so I will now move to item, still under Roman numeral three, item number two. Um, an act concerning social media policies for police departments. Uh, I would entertain a motion to raise that concept. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, Representative Paolillo. Is there a second? Second. second uh, Representative Jenga, thank you very much. Um, and, and I'm um, gonna open the discussion uh, for a moment. I, before we open the discussion, I will just share my, these are, some of these concepts are newly arrived um, before us and this is one of them and and I think this is an area that there's a lot of um, we're going to have to have a lot of conversation about this one and might even have I mean there are some constitutional implications here with respect to to speech uh, so I think there are serious concerns invoked here and I'm looking forward to 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 the, a conversation that will flesh them out I do think a debate and a hearing would help that but I but I I just flag for my own self. I think there are, I look forward to some, some um, serious, interesting debate on this one. So with that said, is there further discussion? And Representative Vail. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, again, I feel like this group is being targeted. I, I don't understand why um, they're citizens of this country, just like the rest of us and have the, the same civil liberties as everyone else. So I don't understand that. And I know a lot of times we say, well, it's just a public hearing, so let's hear both sides. But we're picking and choosing the concepts we're hearing. There's tons that are submitted. Um, I think there's members of this caucus and my caucus on this committee that have bills that haven't been brought up for a public hearing or to be debated. So let's just be clear about that, that yes, we're going to have a conversation, but we're not having a conversation about everything. We're picking and choosing what we're having conversations about. And that concerns me. And this is something I, you know, we could have a conversation until the cows come home and I'm voting no. I mean, there's nothing I need to learn about taking away somebody's civil liberties. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Representative. Representative Hayes. Thank you, Madam Chair. And once again, I'm aware that this is just a concept. However, I don't think it's our place to be managing and running police departments. Uh, the state has post which oversees police and police policies and police training. Every police department in the state, I guarantee you, has a policy on social media and the way it's used. It's not our place to be doing this. We have chiefs that write those policies. We have supervisors that oversee those policies. If they're not being followed, then it's up to the chief law enforcement to do the enforcement of that, not us. Uh, there's no way I can support this. Thank you, Representative. Representative Howard. Thank you, Madam Echo, uh, Representative Hayes and Vail, what they're, what they're saying on the topic. And as a police officer myself, who has recently run successfully the state legislature, and I think everybody in this committee knows that social media is a very important part of that. 
And to, to tell someone like me or even raise a concept that, um, that they, the, the legislature is gonna govern how I can do that as a candidate is um, frankly appalling. And um, I, I take exception to it, I'm not on it. Um, and I will also tell my colleagues, I, had, I did interviews with interns recently who asked me how my profession helps me in the legislature. And my answer to that question was that police officers that are in their communities understand the diversity of their communities in that they're intimately involved in the lives of all sorts of different people, not just within their own socioeconomic circle like most mm -hmm. of us do. And I think that when you take a police officer in a community who knows that community as well as he does and attempt to silence them and even raise that concept, that is counterproductive to getting anything done and bringing this state back together. And I vote no with passion. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. I will note that not all, I mean, there are some leaders in the police who are concerned about um, uh, the tenor and tone and sometimes violence uh, of social media postings. And it's not unheard of for them to have policies on that. So uh, again, I think it's, it, there's a lot of risk here, but um, uh, that said, uh, Representative Boyd. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, I, I, I'm struggling here. I, I have, this is my fifth year in this committee and um, fifth year in the legislature. And, you know, one of the principles that I've always thought that, that we kind of follow here is that, you know, there are lots of different ideas that are on the table. And as a rank and file member of this committee, you know, who's not a chair, who's not in screening, you know, but know how it works in other committees and other roles is, you know, I'm looking at uh, this agenda and I see, you know, a, a, a portion of a sentence. It's not even a sentence, a title, a social media policy is for police departments, right? That could be, you know, interpreted so many different ways that, you know, obviously during the screening process, there, there was some direction or some fundamental question that, that has come up. But at the end of the day, like things get put on the table we agree with and things that get put on the table we don't agree with. It certainly disheartens me if my colleagues are saying that there are ideas that they thought we should hear more about that aren't getting on the table, you know, because there's always this give and take, particularly this early in the process. This early in the process, you know, we're, we don't have legislative language, never mind plain language on a lot of this stuff. You know, and the use of cell phones by emergency personnel, you know, that one. I first looked at it. I looked at it through my own lens. You know, there are clear rules as to who in the state of Connecticut can use cell phones when driving. There are exceptions for emergency services, whereas if I'm driving in my personal vehicle, I could get pulled over and charged. Uh, whereas, you know, if I'm driving a fire truck and it's, and, it, and it's critical to my role, there are exceptions to this stuff. But I guess my point being is that, you know, these are one sentences. I don't know the intent. I don't know where they came from. You know, I've always taken an open mind to willing to hear things. In the past, I voted for things that I'm against to see the concept. Actually, frankly, in the past, we haven't voted on concepts. They've been voice votes in these meetings that have last six minutes. But there's always been a kind of this fundamental trust that in the very beginning, we're going to throw ideas on the table that we want to hear more about and let advocates who feel one way or the other come out and talk about them, regardless of what my preconceived notion of what the end result might be. And I just, th th this committee has long had a tradition that's not what's going on right now. And I guess I would just ask my colleagues on both my, uh, on my side and the other side, like, we're all going to have different points of view when it comes to an end. There's going to be vigorous debates. I, you know, we've had committee meetings that have gone on for hours as they're trying to get to the point, you know, but at this point in the process, I really wish we could throw ideas on the table and then let's hear the, the public hearing and then let's have discussions because at the end of the day, and particularly in this committee, they haven't fallen down to party line stuff. We've had bills that have passed this committee that have pieces of the Republican caucus, pieces of the Democratic caucus, both for and against, because that's the nature of the policies that were taken up. And I, I really wish we don't get stuck down in getting to our forts at this point in the process. Uh, because there is definitely stuff that I don't agree with. And I've told the representative and the, the, the chair that, you know, offline that there's stuff that I, there's no way that I want to see this committee go out and I'm going to fight it down the thing. But for me to look at five words and then determine what's there, I, I can't do that. So I, I'm sorry for jumping on my soapbox here, 
you know, but I, I really think that there are good people on this committee. And I know a lot of you on both sides of the aisle that we can hear some stuff. Let's have the debate afterwards. Um, and let's, let's do what's best in, for public safety in the state. And I'm just very frustrated. So I will yield back before I say something else. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Boyd. That's much appreciated. I will note in, in, in sort of follow up to that, that we are about to have a public hearing this afternoon on 27 bills raised by many of the members of this committee and the caucus. They are not one-sided. They are um, pretty balanced, I think. So, um, Representative Berry. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just for clarity, is this, are these policies for police departments or police officers? So this bill, again, as others have mentioned, this is not a bill, sorry, this is a concept. This was a concept uh, put forward by Senate um, leadership and who has asked us to, to, to have a hearing and, and have a debate about this question and look into these issues. I don't have, perhaps somebody else uh, in the committee has more detail about the intention behind it, but, but essentially it, is, it, it comes from you know, a desire to have some sort of, you know, you could, obviously the narrative can be told in many directions, but the idea is to have some sort of uniform policy that the departments could, could rely on as they try to, as they struggle with how to, how to um, manage this situation, because some are trying to do that. But I don't, beyond that, um, we don't know. It's too early. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Co-Chair, may, may I maybe shed some light on, the, on that position for my colleague? Please. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. And, and I've been hearing the debates here, um, pretty rigorous debates uh, on these issues. But I can, I can tell you first, first and foremost, as a person of color, uh, a Democrat, uh, someone who represents an urban area, which tends, tends to be more left leaning, uh, this is absolutely 100 percent not an attack on police. And as, as my colleagues have said here on their, uh, you know, their statements, uh, this committee has had a, a history and a tradition of being uh, pro cop. And, and this is by no means that. And, I, and, I'll, and I'll share a little antidote of what I think the intent and the. Senator Bradley, you are cutting out on us. Are. Uh, uh, we we can hear we can't <laughs> Senator Bradley I don't know whether you can go somewhere where you have a better line but we can't hear you or at least I can't Definitely born not. raised Catholic as a Catholic I'm sure you guys have all heard so can you hear me now yes we can hear you now I can hear you now yeah. okay so I apologize but I'm not sure where I, where I was last left off but the spirit and intent of this is to have good governance and that's exactly why we're raising these concepts. And I think that oftentimes when we love organizations, um, we, we will, will dismiss certain concerns that have been voiced by the public at large uh, in the spirit of giving people the benefit of the doubt. But if, if, you give, if, you can, if you conceive good policies, it creates for better departments. And both of these policies are by no means intended to mute police officers' ability to speak on issues or to, or to discourage them from running for public office, or, or is this cell phone policy an attack on police officers' ability to do their jobs? What we want to make sure is that people aren't engaged in reckless behaviors, and we want to have uniformity throughout the state of Connecticut. What is the gold standard? What is the way we're going to interact with the public? And what, and what is that going to look like throughout the state of Connecticut? But by no means, I could give whatever reassurances it could be for for the sake of reassurances to members of this committee, is this an attack on police officers or desire to do anything disparaging to the brave men and women who wear that uniform every day? So if, if that gives any solace to anybody, fine. If not, you will see the proofs in the pudding. And hopefully when you see the language, you'll see that the language is intended to make sure that we have the very best police department and that it's unquestionable. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, is there any further, uh, uh, Senator Cassano? You are on mute. Can you unmute yourself? There we go. Yeah, I, I've just, uh, I, I've been on this committee now for 10 years and I don't think I've seen this in, in that 10 year period. You know, we've always given members of the House and the Senate their opportunity to put in a bill and to hear the bill. Uh, and in that process, we learn a lot about each of those situations that are attached to that particular bill. If we're killing them now, that whole learning process is gone. 
uh, that whole idea of trust, uh, of, of supporting your colleagues in the House and Senate is gone. That's not a, that's not a purpose here today. Uh, I, I, I want to hear these. I don't know I want to support them, but I do want to hear why these bills are, are submitted. And I want to learn in that process. And maybe we can make things better all around. That's what this process is supposed to be. If we're at the point that we're going to start cutting off discussion and the ability to, to, to provide opportunities for people in the House and Senate to put bills forward, whether we support them or not, this isn't the place. This is disappointing, quite honestly. I've never seen this before. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Any further discussion? I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Sorry, on the motion to raise concept number two and act concerning social media policies for police departments. Rep Horn, how do you vote? Rep Horn votes yes. Senator Bradley? Senator Bradley votes in the affirmative. Senator Austin? Senator Austin votes yes. I'm sorry, Senator Austin. Do you mind stating that again? I didn't see you on the camera. Senator Austin votes yes. Representative Palolo? Representative Palolo votes in the affirmative. Senator Champagne? Senator Champagne votes no. Representative Green? Representative Green votes no. Representative Ali Brennan? Representative Ali Brennan votes yes. Representative Barry? Representative Barry votes yes. I'm sorry, Representative Barry. Do you mind doing that again? Representative Barry votes yes. Thank you, sorry, the camera didn't grab you at the first time. Representative Bohr? Representative Bohr votes yes. Representative Boyd? Representative Boyd, aye. Senator Cassano? Senator Cassano? Senator, Senator you're Senator. muted. There we go. Senator Cassano votes yes. Thank you. Senator Chicarella? Senator Chicarella? Senator Chicarella votes no. Representative DJ Giovancarlo? Rep DJ Giovancarlo votes yes. Representative DeMesa? Representative DeMesa votes in the affirmative. Representative Felipe? Representative Felipe votes yes. Senator Fonfera? Senator Fonfera? Senator Fonfera? Representative Jenga? Representative Jenga votes yes. Representative Gonzalez? Representative Gonzalez votes yes. Representative Hall? Representative Hall votes no. Representative Hayes? Representative Hayes votes no. Representative Howard? Representative Howard votes no. Representative McCordy? Representative McCordy votes no. Representative Quinn? Representative Quinn? Representative Quinn? Representative Sudinsky. Representative Sudinsky. Representative Sudinsky. Representative Vale. Representative Vale votes no. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, okay, so we're going to move to. Um, uh, again, Roman numeral three, the 
the sixth concept, which is the last one on our list, which is an act concerning fire safety. And I will give you a little background on that before we proceed that, um, Again, these are very airy concepts, but that um, got added to the list at the request of fire marshals uh, concerned about the effective grandfathering in of uh, buildings before 1978, you know, not having to have uh, smoke detectors and the, and the serious fire safety problem that caused. Um, that as you all probably know, what as it currently stands, you could sort of have an opt-in and, and pay a fee of $250 for not having that and and I believe the intent of that was to encourage people to actually get smoke detectors, uh, but it has not panned out that way. And there is a similar bill that was put in uh, by DIS, but it is much narrower. And there was a request not to, uh, because the issue of smoke detectors has been quite contentious in the past and that we separate the two issues so that we could have a debate um, about um, the, the important issues at stake here. Um, so uh, that is that was the intent of that bill. Um, having said that, is there a motion to raise that concept? So moved. Thank you, Representative Palillo. Is there a second? I second. It. Thank you, Senator Bradley. Uh, any discussion, uh, Representative Hayes? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I served for 25 years as a, as a state fire marshal for the towns of both Putnam and Thompson. Uh, and during that time, I did numerous uh, inspections of at homes uh, during closing. There are actually several insurance companies in this state that require that a house is inspected prior to being closed on by that insurance company and that smoke detectors are in place. So. Uh, I'm actually in favor of this. I hope that what this bill is going to do uh, is to ensure that there are working smoke detectors in a home prior to somebody taking ownership of it. Uh, I hope that comes out in a public hearing and I will support this. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Representative McCourty. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as a fire marshal, and I'm also a realtor for many, many years, um, this is a very good concept. Um, Smoke detectors do save lives. They do need to be in every home. Uh, a lot of people can't afford them. Some homes are sold without them. And I've been to closings where the attorney will just take that check for $250 because when the home inspector does the inspection of the home, that can be 30 to 45 days prior to the closing. The smoke detectors might not be working. They don't guarantee they work. They might have at the time of their inspection, but it's a good practice to put smoke detectors in homes and a bad practice to write a check for $250 for smoke detectors. When they go to the closing, they're not gonna spend that on smoke detectors. We need to guarantee smoke detectors are in every home and I look forward to the debate on this bill. Thank you, Thank you Representative. Representative Hall. So I, I, want, I don't wanna be repetitive, but in Massachusetts, so we're a border town where I represent Enfield and East Windsor. And um, a lot of the attorneys at closing will, will suggest to their clients to just pay the $250 because they don't want their clients taking the liability on should the smoke detectors not work after closing and God forbid something tragic happens. So um, what they do in Massachusetts, um, and I'm hoping this is maybe the direction we're going with this bill, is they actually do have the fire departments in to inspect and certify that the smoke detectors are working. So I don't wanna say it shifts the liability, but I think it just bolsters the feeling of safety and security. And I've had several conversations with various closing attorneys and real estate attorneys that feel much more com comfortable with the fact that they have the fire departments going in and actually inspecting these smoke detectors. So I look forward to the debate on this. I think it's a great concept and um, maybe we can move in a more of a direction of Massachusetts and the way they certify these smoke detectors. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative. All very good ideas that I hope we hear more about at a debate. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing no, um, 
opposition to this, I'm going to suggest we have a voice vote unless somebody wants to uh, ask for something else. Okay, so um, on the motion to raise uh, item number six, an act concerning fire safety, um, I would ask for a voice vote and I ask everyone to unmute themselves and turn on their cameras in preparation. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Sorry, I'm going to hope. I, I think that last I wasn't in favor. Uh, if that's not correct, please, please let me know. And I said I too, Madam Chair. I'm sorry. Running Thank the you, appropriations Senator. committee at the same time. <laughs> yes, running two at the same time is a challenge. Okay, the motion carries. Thank you. Uh, okay, now moving to item Roman numeral four, proposed bills to reserve for subject matter hearing. Um, we have um, item number one, proposed House Bill 6367. Um, I would entertain a motion to reserve that for a subject matter public hearing. Is there a motion? So moved. So, uh, Representative Palo moved. Is there a second? A second. Okay. Senator Bradley, thank you. Uh, is there a discussion? Representative McGordy. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, this bill that I see, it, um, it is a two part bill. One part is for fire suppression. The other is for fire prevention. I think that this bill should be divided up into two separate bills as they're two totally different related situations. As far as the uh, fire marshal um, firefighters doing inspections, that is a, um, a task that the state fire marshal, he has a class that he teaches firefighters to be certified as fire safety code inspectors. And I see that if a Logan municipality was to do this, it supersedes what the state is already doing in certifying these uh, firefighters to take these tasks on. And I don't see that there's really a need for it right now. Maybe there should be a discussion with the state fire marshal to maybe have more classes to get firefighters certified. I know that a lot of the bigger cities are having a difficult time getting their inspections done, but just putting guys out in the field that have other tasks of fire suppression, um, doing these things, I think it's just too much on a fire load for the fire fighters to do. And as for the phone, um, I don't know if anybody's seen, you know, there is a um, United States wide, maybe nationwide, trying to get this phone off the streets and be disposed of. There's a lot of ads on the Facebook and social media that if you've been exposed to these uh, phones, that you're entitled to compensation. Instead of having the municipalities or the state fund the collection and the disposal, let's maybe go back to the manufacturer and hold them liable for putting a product out there that's not safe for environment. And therefore, I'm going to vote no today just because it's two bills should be separated, two different discussions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Representative. I just note again that this bill is just, it's being reserved for a subject hearing. This is not a detailed bill. Um, as you, um, some of you probably know, there's also a bill in um, the Environment Committee with respect to these chemicals, to PFAS. Um, so there's an intersection here, but obviously it does have particular impact on our fire departments, um, fire marshals. And uh, so that, that's, that would be, I hope, the, um, a topic of discussion at a, at a hearing, should we vote to hold one. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Uh, seeing none, um, Clerk, will you call the roll? Sorry. Representative Horn? Representative Horn votes yes. Senator Bradley? Senator Bradley votes in the affirmative. Senator Austin? Senator Austin votes yes. Representative Paolo? Representative Paolo votes in the affirmative. Senator Champagne? Senator Champagne votes yes. Representative Green? Representative Green votes yes. Representative Ali Brennan? Representative Ali Brennan votes yes. Representative Barry? Representative Barry votes yes. 
Representative Bohr? Representative Bohr votes yes. Representative Boyd? Representative Boyd, aye. Senator Cassano? Senator Cassano votes yes. Senator Chicarella? Senator Chicarella votes yes. Representative DJ Rangalo? Representative DJ Van Carlo votes yes. Representative DeMesa? Representative DeMesa votes in the affirmative. Representative Felipe? Representative Felipe votes yes. Senator Fonfera? Senator Fonfera? Senator Fonfera? Representative Jenga? Representative Jenga votes yes. Representative Gonzalez? Representative Gonzalez votes yes. Representative Paul? Representative Paul votes yes. Representative Hayes? Representative Hayes votes yes. Representative Howard? Representative Howard votes yes. Representative McCordy? Representative McCordy is a no. Representative Quinn? Representative Quinn votes yes. Representative Sudinski? Representative Sudinski? Representative Sudinski? Representative Balaam? Representative Vail? Representative Vail votes no. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, I'm going to go next to um, item three on um, Roman numeral four, which is um, uh, proposed Senate Bill 396, also on a motion to reserve it for a subject matter public hearing. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Thank you, Senator Bradley. Is, is there a second? Thank you, Representative Palolo. Uh, any discussion? Uh, seeing none, um, oh, we have Senator Champagne. Thank you. I just want to make sure uh, when we start working on this that we realize that, you know, if somebody's in danger, um, law enforcement already has the ability to track that cell phone. And uh, I just want to make sure that, you know, if we're going to, we're going to pass a law that, uh, you know, we're not passing a law that's already covered. That's it. Thank, Thank you, Senator. Yeah. As, as we have discussed, this is quite a complicated situation and there are already some provisions that address this. However, this does arise out of a very particular and tragic situation. And, mm -hmm. and I know that the Senator who put this forward is just seeking a conversation so that to see whether we can possibly put in better procedures that, that would help alleviate a, a, a very uh, painful situation. Um, having said that, do we need to have a roll call vote on this or can we do a voice vote? Thank you. Um, uh, so in which case, um, well, no, we may as well. Um, <laughs> on the motion to um, reserve uh, Senate Bill 396 for a subject matter um, public hearing. Uh, please prepare yourselves for a voice vote by turning on your microphones and your cameras. All in favor? Aye. 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 Go to Tory to Mystic or Aye. Hartford or anywhere else. Opposed? But we can really play. The motion carries, thank you. Uh, and our final item, final bill today is item number two under Roman numeral four, which is proposed House Bill 5583, an act concerning emergency intervention uh, by a police officer when a person suffers an overdose. Uh, is there a motion to reserve this for a, for a hearing? Motion. Dr. Second. Thank you, Representative Hall. And second, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the second. Second. Second, Rep Senator Champagne, thank you. Uh, is there a discussion? Uh, Senator Champagne. Thank you. I, I love the concept of this. I think we do have to work on the language a little bit. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to have a public hearing on this. Uh, anything we can do to help people. 
uh, that are in this situation. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Representative Hall, this is your bill. Yes, it is. It's It's been a bill for a little bit now, and it comes from um, many of our chiefs across the state of Connecticut. Um, I'm happy to work with the language. It should really read instead of custody, it should read protective custody. So right now, the way the statute is, is um, we actually have the ability to arrest people that have been overdosed and nor can't. But what the chiefs are looking for is a lesser, if you will, uh, statute where they can actually do what our surrounding states already do um, and take these um, poor people that have overdosed and been Narcaned into protective custody to get them to a hospital or a treatment center. Um, Massachusetts does it very well. And um, I'd be happy to share uh, how Mass does it with this committee and anybody that has any concerns or questions, but we're obviously open to the language of this bill. Um, a lot of the uh, protective custody statutes really have not caught up with our opioid uh, issues and, and problems across the state. So I hope we at least give this a hearing and hear from all our police chiefs and first responders that deal with these uh, multiple overdoses and Narcans every day. So it's a bill that hopefully will save lives. It's obviously not gonna save every life, but if we can save one with this bill, just by tweaking the statute, I think it's worth hearing. So I wanna thank everybody in advance for their support. Thank you, Representative Hall. And I just wanted to further note that, that as is evident from the fact that we have, had, we have had a number of bills raised by both Democrats and Republicans on this committee in this subject area, it is clearly an issue of urgent concern for many of us. And a number of those bills are being heard at our public hearing today. And I know this particular bill is not for timing reasons. Uh, we couldn't put it on the agenda this time, but, but I, I do hope that we are able to, and I encourage you to raise questions related to the particular issues that you raise in this bill in today's hearing so that we can um, look for ways to combine um, you know, those questions and try to get, try to get um, some good, good testimony on, how, on, on what we might able, be able to do to help you know, those in crisis and, and the officers and first responders who are dealing with this you know, really difficult situation. So thank you. Um, Thank you, any, thank you, Representative. Any any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, I'm going to ask for a voice vote. Please turn on your microphones and your cameras. All those in favor on the motion Aye. on the motion Aye. to reserve this for Aye. a public hearing. Aye. 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 Opposed. The motion carries. Thank you very much. That concludes the business on the agenda. It being 11 o'clock, um, we will hold the votes open until noon today. Um, uh, so please, if you haven't, if you have any doubt about whether your vote was registered on any of these issues, please stay on the call and, and talk to Gina about that to make sure your vote gets registered. Um, our, as you all know, later this afternoon is our next um, convening of the committee. We have a public hearing starting at one o'clock and I hope to see you all then. With that said, the, the meeting is recessed until noon, uh, at which time it will be adjourned. Thank Gina. you all very much. Thank see you, you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Thank Gina. You. Hi. I think I missed the vote, right? Right. Um, I, it was I voted, just. Uh, yes, yeah, Senator Bradley voted in the affirmative. Yeah, okay. I, I couldn't unmute myself the last time you asked. I apologize. Thank you. No worries. All right. Thanks. Have a good day. Uh, Gina, Representative Gonzalez, did I miss any vote? Yes. Um, give me one second. So you missed, um, it was a um, roll call for concept number one. And yes. I can see you if you like. I'm sorry, I can't hear that you. That was for concept number one. It was a roll call for the AAC 
the use of cell phones by emergency personnel? Uh, yes, I vote yes. Okay, thank you. And give me one second. You also had, um, oh, you also had the voice vote. I hope we did that one. Okay, for the roll call, uh, sorry, voice vote, the, the other voice vote was for bill, for concepts to be raised three, four, and five. I can read those to you as well. Three, four, and five? Right. And that was a voice vote, you said? Correct. Okay. A vote yes? Okay. Thank you. Raise the concept? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I just want to, I'm just double checking myself, make sure I got you for the others. Okay, it looks like you're all set. Okay, thank you, Gina. No problem. Have a great day. You too. Bye bye. Bye. Gina, this is Representative Felipe. I might have missed one voice vote while I was asking a question on approach. I just wanted to know if that's the case. Um, I think it was the, the first one we had, which was concept to be raised number three, four, and five. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You're all set. Have a great day. Gina, it's Mike Quinn. I know I missed a bunch of votes. Yes. So we have the first one was voice vote for concepts to be raised number three, four, and five. I'm a yes. Okay. And then we had a roll call for concept number one. Yes. Okay. And we had a roll, a roll call as well for concept number two. Yes. Okay. And you were here for the three bills. And then we also had a voice vote for concept number six. Yeah, I'm a yes on that one. I think I was on, but- For I'm that one? Okay. Okay, so then you're all set. Great. Thank you, Gina. Thank you. Have a good day. We'll see you back later. All righty. Hi, Gina. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? Okay. I was having a little okay. trouble before, so I think I missed a few. Yes, no problem. Okay. So the first one she called uh, for voice vote, uh, concepts to be raised, number three, four, and five. Um, and it was a voice vote for that one. Uh, yes. Okay. And then we did a roll call for number one concept to be raised. Um, we did a roll uh, call for that one. The use of cell phone? Yeah. Um, was there any... Um, Discussion on that? As far um, as, because it's pretty vague. They, yeah, <laughs> they did discuss it. Um, Senator Bradley, um, no, it wasn't Senator Bradley, sorry. Um, I think um, Senator Champagne spoke and I think it was Rep Vale maybe. Um, they all spoke Got it. against it, so. Sure. Okay. So it's a, uh, <laughs> yeah, just don't have too much context behind it, but I mean, I guess it's just a, I guess I'll have the opportunity to ask some questions at that point. So I guess I will vote. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. This is for discussion. Yeah. Concepts to be raised. Got it. Okay. And then the second concept to be raised that you missed was, um, Okay, so you were here for number two. Um, so we missed you for concept to be raised motion number, uh, sorry, number one on the list as well on the agenda. Let me, see, hold on, let me pull it up. I'm going to close on me. Number one was, oh no, so this, so yeah, so number one, you said yes. And then the voice vote was for three, four, and five. You also said 
Yes, for that one. Okay, so you're all set with that one. And then you were here for number six, so you're all set with that one. And you were here for the three bills as well. So it looks like you're all set. Excellent. Thank you so yes. much. No problem. Have a great day. See you later. Bye. Bye. Morning. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm under the weather. I got my second vaccine. Okay. So are you okay? Um, I'm all right. The fever is uh, not really stopping, but uh, I'm home relaxing. Better. I'm home resting. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> hope you get better soon. Me too. Um, so it looks like um, they went over a couple of bills and concepts today. The agenda wasn't too long. So, yeah. so if you want to go one by one or you want me to just give you a rundown of what my votes are? Um, whatever you'd like. They started off with concept bills, sorry, concepts to be raised number three, four, and five. And that was a voice vote. Yep. So obviously I'm okay with that. Okay. And um, let me just cross you off my list. Sorry. And then they did a roll call for concept number one. 
I'd be a no on that. Okay. And they did a roll call for concept number two. I'd be a no on that as well. Okay. And they did a voice vote for concept number six. Yep. Yes for me. Okay. And they did a roll call for bill 6367. It's number one on the agenda. Yeah, I'd be a yes. Okay. And they did a voice vote for bill number two. It's listed as number two, 5583. 5583, yes. That was a voice vote. Mm -hmm. And then they also did a voice vote for bill number three, uh, sorry, number three, bill 396. 396, I'm a yes. Okay. Okay, so you're all set. Thank you so much. Hope Thank you, Gina, I really appreciate it. No problem. Have a great day. I hope so too. Thank you. Alrighty. Bye-bye.